A tracheostomy is the surgical opening into the trachea, allowing the placement of an indwelling tube to maintain patency of an airway. A tracheostomy tube might be inserted for emergency situations, such as airway obstruction due to laryngeal edema, foreign body dislodgement, or tumor. Or it could be used as an alternative to long-term artificial airway use, for instance, an endotracheal tube. A cuff tracheostomy tube stabilizes the airway for an unconscious or paralyzed client who does not have the ability to cough, mobilize secretions, or maintain an open airway. Additionally, the tracheostomy offers the client a route for clearing secretions as well as prevents the aspiration of food into the lungs. A client would have one of three basic types of tracheostomy, cuffed, uncuffed, or fenestrated. The fenestrated type allows limited speech as air passes through the upper airway when the cuff is deflated and external opening is capped. Whichever type of tube is intact, the goal of tracheostomy care is to prevent infection and skin breakdown at the site and maintain a clean, dry, stable airway. A client with a tracheostomy has secretions that collect through the tracheostomy tube and require suctioning. These secretions can also cough around the tube such that the skin and tube require special care. Because the tracheostomy tube is holding open the airway, special care must be taken that the tube is not dislodged during the cleaning process. As before any procedure, wash your hands and wear gloves. The soiled dressing is removed by gently loosening it from around the neck plate. Inspect it for color and odor of drainage. Cleanse around the neck plate with cotton applicators that have been moistened with sterile saline, hydrogen peroxide, or other approved antiseptic solution. Repeat this procedure by rinsing the skin around the neck plate. Avoid dripping liquids into the tracheostomy opening to prevent aspiration while providing a thorough cleansing of the neck plate. Wipe only once with each pad and discard it in order to prevent contamination of a clean area with a soiled pad. Repeat the same cleansing procedure under the neck plate on the skin of the client. Be sure to use cotton applicators to dry the skin under the neck plate to prevent skin irritation or breakdown. If the tracheostomy tube has an inner cannula, then the sterile cleaning of it can begin now. Remove the inner cannula from the outer cannula and place it in solution of hydrogen peroxide and sterile saline to soak. Nurses differ on whether they do this before or after the cleaning of the neck plate. The soak should not take but a few seconds, so either timing is good for the client. Take off the non-sterile gloves and wash hands, then place on sterile gloves so that the inner cannula can be cleaned. Using the tiny wire brush provided, scrub the inside and outside of the soaked inner cannula to remove all secretions. Rinse it in the sterile saline basin and dry with sterile gauze. Then gently slide the inner cannula back into the outer cannula and lock in place. You will not have cleaned the outer cannula at all. It is preferred that a second person be available to assist with changing the ties on the tracheostomy only because there should be no opportunity for it to be dislodged. An obturator is kept at the head of the bed to place in the tracheostomy opening in the event the outer cannula of the tracheostomy tube comes out. As this is an emergency situation, it should be avoided by having the second person with you for the brief time it takes to change the ties. Cut two pieces of twill from the tracheostomy cleaning kit, about 12 to 14 inches long. Make a fold about one inch below the end of each piece of the tape and cut a half inch slit lengthwise in the center of the fold. Have the second person gently hold the tracheostomy tube in place with gloved fingers on both sides of the neck plate and providing reassurance and distraction to the client. Untie the old tracheostomy ties. If they are difficult, be careful if cutting them as you do not want to cut through the cuff inflation tubing. Use tweezers to pull at them until they come loose from the neck plate. Insert the split end of the tracheostomy tape through the opening on one side of the tracheostomy tube neck plate. Pull the distal end of the tracheostomy tie through the cut end and pull tightly. Do this on the other side as well, while the second person continues to stabilize the neck plate. Then tie the tracheostomy tapes with a double knot at the side of the neck to avoid any pressure source at the back of the neck. These tapes need to be snug enough to hold the tracheostomy tube in place while allowing one finger beneath the tape for neck movement. The second person can leave now and wash hands. There is a split gauze in the cleaning kit that will slide under the neck plate of the tube to provide a cushion for the skin and absorb secretions. Discard all used materials 
and wash your hands. As with all procedures, document the client's response to the treatment and that the treatment was completed. This procedure becomes more comfortable for the client the longer the tracheostomy tube is in place. As long as the client is made to feel secure and secretions are frequently removed, the tracheostomy cleaning procedure should feel safe for the client.